National <clears throat> Economic Consultative Forum Steering Committee co-chairperson, Dr. Mike Beamer, I think in absent here, president of the Agricultural Society, Mr. Ngoni Kudenga, National Economic Consultative Forum Acting Executive Secretary, Mr. Muzi Muzite, the Zimbabwe Agricultural Society Chief Executive Officer, Dr. Andrew Matibiri, Senior Government Officials, EA President, Captains of Industry, and Corbis, invited farmer organizations, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, good morning to you all. I hope you are going to bear with my worst voice. I am greatly honored to address the 11th Annual National Agribusiness Conference, which is being held alongside the agriculture show exhibitions. This annual event, co-hosted by the Zimbabwe Agricultural Society and the National Economic Consultative Forum, is critical in transforming our agricultural sector and the economy and the economy as a whole. Particularly, so is we journey towards our vision 2030. Under the vision and leadership of the re-elected president of the Republic of Zimbabwe, his Excellency, Comrade Dr. Emerson Dambuzo Munangagwa, we say Makorokoto Tushumba Purambi. Muzunga Irweshambo Chena Pamunum Tapawe Du. So now you have your arm. Monum Tapa has come back. So we shall all press forward, is it? As we convene here, as agricultural stakeholders, to deliberate and discuss topical issues in agriculture, I am excited to note this year's theme captioned sustained growth, climate and technology adoption, productivity, linkages, and court. The theme resonates well with government's trust of guaranteeing food security and strengthening agricultural value chains. Ladies and gentlemen, as we are all aware, government has taken the lead by extensively investing in agricultural support schemes and is also growing in the private sector through contract farming and public-private partnerships. I implore the private sector to also intensify its efforts in financing the various value chains of this integral sector. In essence, I am encouraging the private sector to continuously review and come up with appropriate financing models to support government efforts. It is critical to know that between 60 and 70 percent of the population relies on agricultural activities. The sector is also supplies, the, the sector also supplies 60 percent 
of raw materials required by the industrial sector and contributes 40% of total export earnings in Zimbabwe. Therefore, it is imperative to leave no one behind in coming up with action-oriented policies pertaining to this critical pillar of our economy. In this regard, government will intensify rural development and industrialization angered on agriculture 8.0 model, which encompasses presidential input program from Vudza into Assam. Presidential input program for cotton. Presidential communities fisheries programs. Presidential rural port program. Presidential bridge trick, uh, tick crease program. Presidential goat pass on scheme and Vision 2030 Accelerator Model. Such inclusivity will ensure we achieve sustainable food self-sufficiency and nutrition as we march in unison towards achieving an empowered and prosperous upper middle income society by 2030. Distinguished guests, let me highlight that under the Second Republic, we have witnessed a remarkable transformation of our agricultural sector, as evidenced by increased productivity, improved farming practices, and enhanced support systems for farmers. In the 2022-2023 season, the agriculture achieved a bumper harvest owing to climate smart agriculture and other government initiatives that promote the efficient use of resources and tackle the challenges associated with climate change. Over and above this, Government has accelerated construction of dams and intensified irrigation farming to reduce the effects of recurrent droughts. The country also registered its largest wheat harvest in 2022, a record 375,000 metric tons of wheat was produced against the national requirement of about 360,000 metric tons. This is, therefore, Zimbabwe is self-wheat sufficient, notwithstanding some ad hoc import of glistering wheat for specialized use, which Zimbabwe does not yet produce. In addition, in the 2022-2023 tobacco farming season, the country also recorded the highest tobacco output in its history. Tobacco output stood at 293 million kilograms, surpassing the previous record of 200, uh, 259 million kilograms in the year 2019. Out of this total output, the smallholder farmer, farmers 
across our country contributed 85%. I commend them for their efforts. And this is consistent with the mantra, leaving no one and no place behind. We say to our smallholder farmers, well done. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, government is government under the astute leadership of the President, His Excellency, Comrade Dr. Emerson Damzom Nangagwa, is committed to increase agricultural output in order to meet and exceed national requirements for both human consumption and industrial use. It is worth noting that the agriculture sector initially projected to grow by 4% in 2023 is now projected to grow by 9.7%. The total cereal production, excluding winter wheat crop, is estimated at 2,600,000 tons for 2023. That is 40% above the production levels achieved last year. In enhancing agricultural industrialization, government will put in place a policy to ensure value chain industries and processed goods for export under tobacco, citrus, and fish farming. This will be achieved through aggregation that is bringing together farmers growing the same crop to create a larger and more consistent supply to meet consumer and export demands. In this regard, the Second Republic will continue to provide the necessary resources, such as machinery, fertilizers, agricultural technologies, and extension services that are critical to empowering our farmers, boosting their yields and earnings. Government will continue to create a conducive environment that attract and support market-based investments. Therefore, a number of investors in fertilizer making, fish, wheat, and cattle farming have been engaged and are in the process of finalizing the necessary agreements with the relevant line ministries. This will facilitate long farming mechanization programs, researches in new varieties, technology transfer, and ultimately food self-sufficiency in the face of climate change. The Second Republic is cognizant of the need for farmers to plant early for the coming cropping season. Therefore, government has put in place measures to expedite payments of harvest delivered through the Grain Marketing Board. Government shall also continue to review the producer prices of various crops in line with macroeconomic conditions, particularly the exchange rate induced inflation. Despite the limited resources, it is gratifying to note that government has been pro proactive regarding marketing of crops. In addition, Treasury has been consistently availing financial resources to ensure timely payments to farmers. Distinguished delegates, allow me to once again commend the organizers of this conference for providing a platform where stakeholders can profit 
stakeholder inclusive policies in boosting the agricultural value chains. I'm happy that the presentation by the Meteorological Services Department will cover the tropical issues relating to 2023-2024 rainfall season. We, ex we, are, we are expecting the El Nino phenomenon. So when that presentation is done, please pay attention. And when you go back to your um, farmers, as the stakeholders who have come to do, we have come to represent them, we need to take the advice that will be given by our experts so that El Nino, no El Nino, we will still have Bamba harvest. You will get a presentation on the challenges and opportunities on adaptation to climate change among farmers in Zimbabwe. As you further deliberate today, I would like to invite you to proffer robust ideas for the transformation of the agricultural sector and contribute towards the attainment of Vision 2030. Fellow citizens, as I conclude, may I take this opportunity to applaud the peaceful environment that prevailed in the period preceding, during our harmonized general elections and after. I appeal to you, fellow citizens, to maintain this peace. The period was characterized by tranquil love and a sense of unity of purpose among the people of Zimbabwe. You are all aware that Zimbabwe is our homeland. We should nature and develop it together. It is therefore imperative that we continue to foster and maintain peace, love, and harmony. If we love our country and desist from self-hate, it will create a conducive environment for the growth and posterity of the economy. At this juncture, let me express my sincere gratitude to each and every one of you for your unwavering commitment and dedication to the agricultural industry. Your tireless efforts will not only ensure food sustenance for our nation, but will also contribute significantly to economic stability and, poster and prosperity. During your discourse today, I would like you to do so knowing that as government, we stand ready to listen to and implement any meaningful recommendations that emanate from the deliberations. Having said that, I would like to declare the 11th Annual National Agri-Business Conference officially open. Together, we make Zimbabwe great. I thank you.